Hello friends, George Kramer here, missional pastor and instructor. Today I want to try to lay out the difference between the two models of church, incarnational or attractional. As I go through the seven attributes of each, attempt to see if you currently practice an incarnational style or attractional style of church leadership. Let's begin. Nurture relationships where one lives and works. This posture seeks to do life together with others in the context of where the majority of life is spent, mainly at home or work. As you share common spaces with others, you nurture relationships and build a pathway to authentic community. This works well in a condo or apartment building. Number one, for attractional church. The life of the church revolves around the main grounds. It is usually a permanent, multi-purpose building with a sign or billboard to draw the attention of people passing by to attend worship services. Relationships are built usually before or after services or at one of the church-sponsored events. Number two for incarnational, church life is, is experienced where life is happening. Church is experienced in the day-to-day -day life. As one engages their neighborhood, questions emerge and opportunities arise to walk with others on their faith journey. The sanctuary is located in the midst of backyard cookouts, dinner parties, little league games, and through everyday encounters. Number two for attractional church. Church life is experienced mainly on church campus. A broad selection of high quality programs is provided for all ages. This helps draw people with various interests and needs into the internal life of the church. Our culture provides an abundant amount of recreational activities, so the church programs need to be attractive enough to compel non-members to join in church life. Number three for incarnational. Less structure and programming. It stays flexible enough to adapt and respond to the movement of the Holy Spirit in the neighborhood. The community is attentive to where God is already working and together they decide where and how to join Him wherever He leads. It is able to, re to be spontaneous and plans can be altered if necessary. Number three for attractional, highly structured and organized. With a variety of scheduled services and programs, Bulletins and calendars are created many months in advance to keep the congregation informed of all the available activities and information on how to participate. Oftentimes, the bulletins will contain the order of service and a menu of available programs for which to sign up. There is little flexibility once the schedule is set. Number four for incarnational, collaborative approach to service. There is an expectation that all the members of the body will be serving the community in some capacity. Each person is encouraged in bringing their unique set of spiritual gifts and abilities to build up the body. There is a team approach and leadership develops organically as gifts and abilities surface within the community. Number four for attractional. The majority of ministry is handled by select staff. The church has placed professional staff to run and maintain the majority of the, of the activities and services to cater and serve churchgoers. The select group of staff seek to create a memorable experience to make it worthwhile for attenders to come back. The pastor is a central figure to the worship experience who possesses a dynamic personality and communicates highly individualized messages from the pulpit. Hearers will often say, it always feels like he or she is speaking directly to me. Five for incarnational. Success through testimonials. Success is measured through the story shared regarding how God has been active and working in the midst of the faith community to bring about restored relationships with the Lord and each other. The focus is maintaining quality relationships, not on the quantity of attenders joining the community. Number five for attractional. Measure success by the three B's, building, budget, and butts. Attendance is a priority since through tithes and offerings, bills can be paid, including payroll for professional staff, building maintenance, events and programs, and the rest of the cost associated with keeping the church attractive to outsiders. Finances are crucial to keep all the various activities and services running. As attendance increases, expansion is required to accommodate growth, which requires additional funding. Number six for incarnational. Gatherings often occur in homes, community centers, common areas, or coffee rooms. Whatever space is available is utilized, providing minimal upkeep and cost. It is a time for support, connection, and learning in a relaxed, informal atmosphere. 
Number six for attractional. Relies on an established permanent building. The life of the church revolves around a central location where all the services, programs, and events take place. At the central location, there's also a stage with technologically advanced lighting, stadium-like seating, all facing in one direction, all with the purpose of putting on a good show on a weekly basis. Number seven for incarnational. The good news is shared in word and deed. The good news is seen in tangible ways as believers become the hands and feet of Jesus in the neighborhood. Sharing the gospel is usually done in a spontaneous, casual, non-confrontational manner after a level of trust has been built through relationships. More often, the gospel is caught rather than taught. Number seven for attractional. Evangelism occurs mainly at surface services and events. Evangelism occurs mainly from the pulpit where, after a message is given by the pastor, and while worship leaders perform their last song, hearers are invited to go to the altar and give their life to Christ. After seeing the comparison between the two models, would you identify more with our incarnational or attractional? The predominant church model in America is the attractional model, which focuses heavily on creating services, events, and activities to urge outsiders to leave their turf and join the culture of the Christian community. Some will be drawn by these attractive methods, especially those who already attend church or have some kind of church background. But there is still a large unchurched segment that no matter how attractive the church is, it will, not, it will still not be compelling enough to draw them to attend, especially since the attractional church is competing against secular culture, which are also using methods to try to attract people to attend their events like professional sports, concerts, festivals, and events, and other activities. There are positive elements to both approaches. I want to support those who desire to be more balanced, between the two models. If you want to grow in incarnational ministry, please contact me at jorge at senttotheworld.org or visit the website at senttotheworld.org. You can also visit our social media outlets. Thanks for watching and God bless.